in the previous video of this playlist, we looked at this particular computer program here. And we can see that we created a string, and the string content is never test bathwater with both feet. On the next line, we use this method find to go and find whether this string with appeared in the string above. And we can clearly see that it does, it appears here. And more to the point, not only does find find that it appears, what it will do, it'll tell you the position at which with appears. And it appears here at index position 22. So now when we go to this line, which will print the index position as returned to this variable here, we will see that the output is 22. We then went and had a look at this computer program here, which had the one amendment, and the amendment is here, where we're trying to find the word the, and if you look above, it doesn't exist. So under these circumstances, what Python will do, it'll return minus one, as you can see here. Now that tells us as programmers that the substring we were looking for doesn't exist in the string where we were doing the looking. Now if you haven't really followed that, what I recommend you do is go back and look at the previous video in the playlist first. Let's now consider this computer program here. And if we look at the first line, it's saying string underscore one is assigned and it's going to be assigned a string, never test bathwater with both feet. Now what will happen in an object-orientated Python program is we can consider this notion of an execution space and an object is going to be created. And this is an instance of the string class. And at its core, it has the string, which I can't show in full here because there isn't enough room on the diagram. But it's shown at the core because an object shows something referred to as encapsulation. Encapsulation is where you have the data, which in this case is the string, and the methods grouped together in this entity referred to as an object. Now, of course, this particular object is going to be named a string underscore one. Now, the reason it's named string underscore one is because it appears here in the code. As you can see, string underscore one is assigned this particular string. So this particular object is created with this name. Now, at the core, we can see we have the string, but it doesn't fit. So I'm going to show the string here. And we can see that the full string appears here in a schematic diagram. And we can see that it's index position from zero all the way up to 35. Now, if we look at the next line, we can see that this variable is going to be assigned whatever this message works out. And if we have a look, we can see that we have dot notation. And on this side of the dot, we have string underscore one. Now that refers to the object to which we're going to send this, which is the message. So we can see in the diagram below the actual message appearing. And we can see that the word find is here in the code and it's here in the message. And if we look in the brackets here, we can see there's water, 11 and 21. And that is as it appears here in the code. What we need to do now is to say, right, well, what's this going to do? Well, it's going to invoke the method that's part of the object. And the method would have been defined in the string class from which this object is actually created. So we will invoke the find method. And if we now look, what we're trying to find is the word water. But we also have these other arguments, the 11 and the 21. So let's deal with what they mean first. Well, the 11 is pointing to index position 11. And the 21, well, it's tempting to think that this is going to point to index position 21. In fact, it doesn't. It points to one less than this. And this is something that's consistent with Python. If you remember... These numbers here usually point out the stop value, which is what you don't go as far as. So in fact, this 21 marks off this position here. And what will now happen is we're going to try and find water between these two points that are marked off. In other words, we have a look to see if water is in this area of the overall string. And we can see it is. It's here. Consequently, we will see that the find will return 16 because water begins at index position 16. And of course, that 16 is now going to be returned. It's returned here to index position. And the next line, we can see prints that index position. So we can see that the output of the program is, as we expect, 16.
consider the computer program again but this time with a slight amendment and the amendment is shown here you can see this says 19 and before it was 21 but we're going to have the same sequence of events taking place so let's just have a look at them again we're going to have the execution space we're going to have the object created and this object is going to be given the name shown by this label as string underscore one and of course we're now going to see the string more fully here with all of its index positions because we couldn't show it in the middle of the object because there isn't enough room on the diagram and then of course we're going to be sending the message and we can see in this position that we're sending 19 whereas previously it was 21 nevertheless what's going to happen we're going to invoke the find method that's part of the object and of course we're now going to have a look at what this 11 and 19 does well we know it's going to mark off index position 11 we know this one's going to mark off index position 18 because remember it's always one less so we're going to be looking in this region of the overall string to see if water's there and clearly it isn't in that area part of it is but that's not what we're looking for here we're looking for all of the word water so what the find function will do in these circumstances it'll say well I can't find it and it indicates that by generating minus one and of course that minus one is now returned it's given to index position and then of course we print the index position just for our benefit to see that in fact this has returned minus one and we can see the minus one has appeared here in the runtime of the actual program so as programmers we know if we get a number back that isn't minus one then we have found the string and if it's returned minus one then we know the word we're looking for the substring we're looking for doesn't exist in the area we're looking at check out the supporting website for these videos and also consider subscribing to the youtube channel and get an automatic update every time i upload a new video also consider subscribing to the google plus circle that relates to these videos